Hi, I'm John, and this is my show, An American Scheme. This is going to be episode five. I'm going to talk about Joe Jackson and Barry Gordy and why I believe that they knew each other um, before uh, the Jacksons. Uh, I think they go way back. So uh, Joe Jackson's born in 1928 and Barry Gordy's born in 1929. And both of them uh, were fighting in the Golden Gloves. And I think it was around the same time, but I couldn't find Joe Jackson's uh, boxing record. I found Barry Gordy's boxing record in a website called BoxRec.com, I believe, which is BoxingRecords.com. And when I looked at some of the comments around that uh, website, people had commented about Joe Jackson saying that this place keeps really good records from all of boxing records throughout all of history, all the golden gloves, everything. I was able to find Barry Gordy's history in there and he had fought, um, you know, over 10 fights for sure. And one of the things that was notable about it is he had traveled, at least, it was at least once to California. He had went all the way during his uh, golden gloves career. He had traveled all the way across the country to California to fight to show that there's traveling going on in that Golden Gloves thing. And Gary, Indiana is only 200 miles away from Detroit. And Gary, Indiana is actually called uh, part of what back then, I don't know if it's still called this today, but it's called the Chicago Metroplex. So you got actually Chicago, Chicago, Illinois would be the big city. And then you come down to East, I believe it's called East, uh, East Chicago, Indiana, which is in Indiana, and then Gary, Indiana, which is right under that. So it's like a, a, a the big city that actually comes down all the way to Gary, Indiana, all the way up to sh uh, Chicago. So that would have been the scene where Joe Jackson would have been basically working the scene when he's working with the kids. But that's also a scene he would have been running around in, going into Chicago from Gary, Indiana. He definitely would have been heavy in that area uh, during all the times when he was trying to be a musician. Plus, when he's boxing, he, you know, back then, uh, people actually went out and mingled with people. They knew their neighbors back then. You probably would have known everybody on your block back then. It's a totally different way from how we live today, you know, it's not always so much like that in a lot of the areas. It's, there's a part of that that is different. Where back then, you would have known everybody. You would have known the people in your neighborhood. People knew people. And um, Joe Jackson, I would think that he would have been going over to Detroit. It doesn't, it wouldn't shock me if he had traveled to Detroit and there was clubs there and they could have made contacts with Barry Gordy because Barry Gordy's sister worked at some club that was supposed to be really hip in Detroit. There was some real hip thing and she was there. And these people know a lot of people and there's a lot going on in, in those scenes. You know, and Barry Gordy, uh, later when he wrote songs for Jackie Wilson, Jackie Wilson also was a Golden Gloves fighter, you know, so there's just a little similarity thing about that with them. And so, um, uh, with, uh, with Joe Jackson, um, I, there's one video that I would, I want you to watch and it's a, it's a tricky little video, but there's a couple little things in there that are really interesting. And the video is actually a more modern ver video, but it's actually Joe Jackson's brother, Luther Jackson. And it's this, uh, a guy, Geppetto, who claims he's related to, uh, the Jacksons. I think maybe Jermaine, he kind of looks like him. And, uh, but you know, if he's related to the, J the Jacksons, uh, I'm saying Michael's not a blood relative to, uh, the Jackson. So as far as being related to them, that doesn't, it wouldn't, to me, it holds no significance at all as far as where the talent comes from. Michael's the talent, you know, <clears throat> I don't even give Janet Jackson anywhere near the credit of being anywhere near the talent of Michael Jackson. I personally, uh, Michael Jackson, as far as being an artist, I hold him on a super high pedestal. And, uh, it's one of the things that's really odd because, uh, when he performs, his uh, performances are, are very sexual and stuff, but uh, he is very innocent. I'm going to get into that in the next video and stuff, but it's just one of these, it's one of these contradictions. It's really weird to the man he is when he's performing, the artist, compared to how he actually is in real life and stuff. But so uh, that Geppetto guy has a video. It's on his page, uh, would be the person who published the page is Geppetto maybe Geppetto, I don't know, it's something Geppetto something. <laughs> so it's, uh, the video is called Michael Jackson's uncle, Luther Jackson confirms Geppetto Jackson is family. That's the name of the video in YouTube. And, uh, the video runs for two minutes and 49 seconds. So Luther Jackson says that, uh, he's hanging out with, uh, Jimmy Reed and Howlin' Wolf and Jimmy Reed and Howlin' Wolf are artists on the chess label and the chess label 
um, I had mentioned it in the earlier videos, but uh, Barry Gordy's got direct connections to the Chess label through the other member of his writing team. It was his sister, and his sister Gwen was the boyfriend Billy, who's got direct connections. And later, I think he became a high executive level person at Chess Records, and I think Gwen might have even went and worked at Chess Records too. The Chess Records was a big part of them, and actually Barry Gordy. When they first uh, was when he was first making the Tamla and with Smokey Robinson, one of the Miracles' very first songs uh, was published under the Chess label. It shows the connection with them is real serious. That the Chess label was a big deal, and so Chess label is in Chicago, and Luther Jackson saying he's hanging around with guys and saying Joe Jackson's all around. You know, obviously he's around the same scene too. So he's saying he's hanging out with guys that are on the chess label. So there's a thing there that's like Barry Gordy with the chess label and now with Luther Jackson saying he's hanging around artists that are on the chess label. They're running around the same scene. It just seems like it's somewhere. I believe that's where somewhere in there is that, uh, Joe Jackson and Barry Gordy had developed a friendship. These guys were fighters. They had an interest in, in music. You know, these guys have simpler, similar interests. They're, I could see them being friends. They're business oriented. You know, these are tough guys. I could totally see them building a bond and becoming friends long before any of the uh, Michael Jackson stuff happened. And so, um, when the, uh, when the thing happens and Diana Ross gets pregnant, Diana Ross, if she gets pregnant at uh, 14 years old, right? And uh, Smokey Robinson, it's right at the time when Smokey her hooks up with Barry. So Smokey Robinson and Diana Ross, if they, if he gets her pregnant, to them, it's just a thing that's like, okay, well, you know, they're young, they're going to deal with the situation, they're dealing with it. And you need to listen to the song uh, Shop Around, which is the it's the first number one hit for the Tamla record, and that's the song that actually uh, turned Motown into Motown. It's that song. And you need to listen to the words of that song, because listen to the artist, Smokey Robinson, Listen to what he's saying and listen to what he, the words. It's When you listen to the song, it's like, wow, can you believe that he actually wrote a song about what his mom, listen to the words of what his mom's telling him to do. And and you think about why would she say that, but put it in the relation that Smokey has just told his mother that he got Diana Ross. And remember, Smokey has known Diana Ross since she's like, I saw his back as far as eight years old, that they'd like live just uh, down the street on the Belmont in the Brewster Douglas housing projects, they totally know each other. So Smokey's mom totally knows exactly that Diana Ross little girl. And she would have been watching her. She would have seen these girls trying to come around her her little man, Smokey Robinson. She would have seen uh, all the girls, you know, just liking him. She would have been watching for that. She's the mother. She obviously would have seen that. Listen to what the word the song shop around and it's like wow that is hardcore you know and so then you can see why Smokey would do it too so Barry Gordy's telling Smokey look at I can't have you as an artist if you have a kid with a, a 14 year old Diana Ross that's not gonna work we got a problem here now that, that's not gonna work we have to have a clean image it's all about clean image especially back then when it would have been a lot harder for the black entertainment it's not like now where it's much more accepted you know because especially somebody like Michael Jackson who broke down them doors you know straight up knocked them doors down and so uh uh, back then it would have been much more difficult and uh, you had to deal with image and remember this is their first group Motown hasn't developed yet they're still trying to make it Barry has a lot on the line if Barry doesn't make this if this doesn't work where does he go from this point he's got responsibilities you know where does he actually go this is the motive of what gives him the motive to actually do that that's why Barry Gordy's got a lot to lose he's the one that's got everything to lose he knows what he's got and uh, what he's on the verge of creating and so Barry Gordy is the one that I believe he says, hey, look, I, you know, and he says the Joe Jackson, Joe Jackson's this guy is the perfect scenario. We can put Michael in that family. And when Joe Jackson, uh, I think Joe Jackson was still wanting to be an entertainer because when you watch the movies, the Jackson's American Dream, um, 
It's actually when Catherine is pregnant with Michael that Joseph goes back on the road with the Falcons and he actually starts to perform. That's actually when he's pregnant, when she's pregnant with Michael, which I believe correlates with the fact that he had just gotten Michael in the house from Barry Gordy and Barry Gordy's the guy, he knows it. So he's trying to still make it himself because now he's got this connection to Motown and he's going to, he's going to uh, spin it in his direction if he can. So he's trying to make it. And that's what we're later when it comes with the Tito thing. Uh, in the movie The Jackson's American Dream and Tito's playing the guitar and they're saying he's secretly playing the guitar but that would have been Joe think about the stern man of Joe Jackson and what that guitar would have mean to him and what um, it would have been his prized possession that's a thing that there's no possible way that Tito could have possibly picked up that guitar unless uh, Joe was teaching him to play the guitar which the father that's what it, at some point there Joe starts to actually train Tito and Tito starts to be the one that uh, starts to play the instrument probably there's probably a thing there that he's he's doing his thing as soon as the Falcon thing didn't work out for him he probably put his focus into the uh, kids, hey, you know, kids want to learn the instrument. He starts t teaching Tito's. Tito, Tito starts to actually learn how to play the guitar, and uh, you know, so the Tito and the uh, uh, Jackie and Jermaine, you know, at some point there, the I, I'm not sure exactly which ones of them, but they had went. I know it's Tito was the first one that actually started to perform, you know, and they started to do their little thing and stuff because they're older. By the time. Um, uh, by the time they signed to Motown, you know, Jackie's right about 18, and then so the other ones would be like just, uh, two years under that, boom, boom, like that, whatever, how it goes, it's close to, but they're just under 18, but they're older and stuff, they're not like the, still the kids that Michael is, and uh, so, oh boy, there's so much to go through here and stuff, so, um, with the Smokey, um, so Barry's the one. He's the one that's got the connection to Joe Jackson. That's how Michael gets put in the house. They they make an arrangement. They tell Joe Jackson, uh, Barry Gordy tells Joe Jackson, I need you to take care of this kid. But he wouldn't tell him the story. Barry uh, Joe Jackson wouldn't know Smokey. They're not telling the whole story. But Joe Jackson's getting money. Think about in the movie The American Dream also. When Joe Jackson shows up to the kids, oh, when after Michael sings, I think it is, and he shows up with a van full of instruments. Where did all that money come from? Where did those instruments come from? It, to me, it's that uh, Barry Gordy started funding the Jackson family. Once Michael went into the house, they're getting a little bit of extra money for that, for sure. You know, so there's a, that's where I think all the connections and where the motive lies between the two, that they know each other. That's how Michael gets put into the house. And think about the reality of Michael being in that situation of how Joe is looking at him. And think about how Michael always said of how Joe treated him and how he didn't have a childhood and this and that and the th realities of it. If he's not, if Joe is looking at him as like a cash cow kind of thing, you know, it's, it's all about money. It is about the control. And especially once Michael comes out as the talent, you know, Joseph jumped in with the control and that's exactly what he did. As soon as he seen he had talent, boom, I'm taking you all the way, kid, because you got connections that you don't even know about. And I'm going to milk it for everything it's worth. And that's exactly how they got him into Motown. Joe Jackson forced the hand through the Steel Town contract where he was like, you don't do this. I'm going to go get these kids signed on my own but at that point Barry Gordy had to step in and actually see okay what am I dealing with with these kids as far as entertainers I have to actually deal with it then he did his things that he did and he brought him into Motown and got the control that he needed so they could uh, all have the good lives that they've had you know so okay that's all for now bye